happening right now. All right, good evening, board members, Superintendent Sachs. We're gonna do a really quick update for you on just pre-K and kindergarten. Just wanna give you kind of an overview um, and I'm gonna let you know a little bit about what happened with um, kindergarten enrollment day and um, Super Saturday and those kind of things. But first I'm gonna turn it over to um, Mrs. Atkins because she is the pre-K czar. She knows it all about pre-K. So I'm gonna let her talk to you first a little bit about pre-K and what our collaborative sites look like. We have 47 classrooms, collaborative classrooms. Um, they are located, we have 14 classrooms in 10 child care centers um, and one Head Start site, which is at Monroe. We have six preschool special needs classrooms. We have 14 county classrooms and 13 Head Start classrooms in 18 schools. Now, all of our classrooms in the schools are collaborative because they're duly enrolled if children qualify for Head Start. So we may have a, a county child also eligible for Head Start services. We have 44 kindergarten classrooms in 18 schools plus one virtual class. Um, this year and every year, um, actually for the probably the past six or seven years, we have um, brought pre-K teachers together along with kindergarten teachers um, and we have worked on a program that we can transition preschool students into kindergarten by meeting like um, two hours for an afternoon or an evening that um, children can come and get to meet the teachers, get to tour their building um, and and just sort of get to know what's going on in that kindergarten classroom along with the parents. And the parents get to come and they get to talk to the teachers and they get an idea about what's happening in the school system. So as you can see, um, we've got a date for every activity. Um, we've got times and we're encouraging, we've sent them out to child care centers, we've sent them out to preschools in the um, Huntington area and we're trying to get everyone to hear and understand the kids are welcome okay so if you need something to do one evening check out our transition activities and you too can be a kindergarten student all right so um, on the very last um, slide, um, just kind of want to update you with kind of our enrollment numbers. I went ahead and threw out, we usually get mm, a third-ish on enrollment day, a little bit more sometimes. So you can kind of see there we're pretty close um, in numbers. They're a little bit lower this year than last, but not a, as far as on enrollment day, which, is, which was March the 1st, a couple Fridays ago. Um, and then I also put on there, so we're looking at, so far we have 327 pre-Kers enrolled for next year and um, 532 um, kindergarten students, which include 104 from the child care centers. So we are, um, we're rolling for next year, getting ready to go. So, and then I just want you to kind of take a look at where we are for pre-K and kindergarten enrollment. These were numbers of, from Weavis this week. Um, as far as our current enrollment, we're looking around th um, 830 in both kindergarten and pre-K so far this year. Um, and then 226 of those pre-K numbers are actually in the child care centers. Any questions? Oh, just so you know, so we did manage to enroll 10 more enrollees at our Super Saturday event, but I will tell you, I know Dr. Sachs is gonna talk about hard hats and heroes and that real, and we were packed over on Super Saturday. We had both sides of the Civic Center, you know, his the um, foundation event and our event, and um, there were lots of good things for little ones there. And so we, it was super successful. We had about 500 kids went through that event and um, it was good stuff so I don't know that they quite saw our table for enrollment uh, was probably but um, 
we had lots of good activities going on there. Can you explain to the board kind of like an overview of Super Saturday and what it's really all about? Just so, that so Super it. Saturday is resources in the community for for. Um, Okay, Actually, I was going to say birth to three, and she's in my ear saying birth to eight. So, yes, there, it's a lot of school readiness skills, a lot of different resources. Birth to three is there. You know, DHHR is there. We are there. We had a table with activities. Uh, Mr. Miller was there. <laughs> um, child care centers were there. So lots of different resources for the community. Any other questions? Absolutely. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Baltz, an update, operations and support. All right, Madam President, uh, board members, Dr. Sachs, general counsel, just give you a brief update of the construction projects and everything related to operations and support here in the district. So the, uh, the first project we're going to discuss tonight is the Meadows Elementary at the new location. They're continuing to move spoils from the great beam dent, uh, trenches. And right now they are currently, it's the, the building is starting to kind of come up out of the ground at this, at this point, but they are continuing to excavate and place rebar for those grade beams for the, uh, <clears throat> for the, the uh, structure that's underground. And they are continuing to install the underground electrical and sanitary lines, all of that. And they have started laying block around the perimeter of the building. So this is the first time that we are actually starting to see anything above grade and um, the rough ends for the plumbing is being installed as the project goes as the project goes forward so you the picture that you see up there is actually of them laying the block at the perimeter of the building so everything is uh, still you know weather contingent up there davis creek we don't have to worry about the weather so much at least on the inside uh, the brickwork is nearing uh, completion on the exterior of the building uh, ductwork electrical plumbing work continues uh, and if you look over to the left, that is a hallway, one of the hallways. They've got a base coat of paint on that, and it's really starting to take shape. Drywalls going up throughout the, throughout the building. The painters continue to put up uh, the, the base coats, and the foundation um, has been laid for the storage building in the back area, and the window frames are being installed. And I know when I give a, a you know, board update, I think I did include that, and you're starting to see those window frames at Davis Creek Elementary. But before I go any further, I actually have, um, I've got two principles here and I want to talk about it. And this is an item that you're going to see later on in the in agenda. And that's going to be the Davis Creek principal, Patrick O'Neill and Miss Carolyn Fry from Southside Elementary. Because what you did approve a couple weeks ago is that we are able to allocate some uh, playground funds to some of those schools. And these two schools have done an excellent job in raising funds um, at the school level to be able to save up for this. We were just able to supplement some of those things to, to help those fundraising efforts. So I'm gonna step away from the mic for just a second and I, I'm gonna show you the rendering of those so you can get a view of those. And what they're gonna actually do is take those back with them um, so the students and staff can see what is coming. And that's pending board approval tonight. And um, so they can see that. So Patrick and Carolyn, if you all don't care to come up for just a moment. So this is the uh, Southside Elementary playground that Carolyn is, you might want to hold it up there so they can see it. Uh, the picture is a rendering, 3D rendering of that done by uh, Bluegrass Recreation, um, one of the approved vendors. And then down below is just a uh, 2D 
uh, graphic of it so you can see the actual layout from up above. So th this is the school colors and everything. So um, okay. that now, is. I to say, Patrick, when you hold up your sign, I want you to smile as pretty as she does. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Carolyn, you can take that back to the school, but I'm going to let you if you. brainstorm per grade level to come up with new names. Um, we're going to have a farewell celebration to Big Blue and we are going to actually have every grade level nominate what they think would be the best name. Um, I'm thinking Big Red because our colors are red and black um, or maybe we are the Cardinals so we thought maybe the Nest but we'll let the kids decide and they'll um, have a voice in So when that happens, of course you all will be invited. Okay, so that is the the South Side. When I will tell you both of these schools, um, it's been a it's been a pleasure to be able to work with them. I will say this is uh, teacher and student driven. They are taking these designs back and they are refining those with the staff members to determine and their LSICs to determine what is the most appropriate playground that's going to fit the needs of their of their school. So I'm going to go ahead and give you Davis Creek. And there's actually two foam boards because their every playground is a little bit different in what they're in what they're doing. So Patrick, I'll give you that one. And this one is actually just um, the, the one on the right hand side is the main playground, which is five through 12. And this is the pre-K, which is actually on in a, in a separate area, but there's a fence actually uh, between the two. So, and then again, down below, you can see an aerial of what it looks like and the dimensions of that. And what Patrick and their, and their school uh, really, really, you know, looked at was they were looking at inclusive pieces. They have some area, a grass area, They've got some rubber mulch, and they also have the port and play, which is like the rubberized kind of track surface that's spongy, like you would see at Cox Landing or many of the other many of the other schools. So, they have they've been working for a really long time in in um, really narrowing this down on what they need for Davis Creek Elementary, and it's really been uh, working with the contractors uh, and the architect to make sure that it's all done. And our goal, you know, things happen with construction, is to really have this ready when um, and mobilize a pending board approval tonight with the uh, with the company Bluegrass Recreation to be able to start this on July 1 and be ready at the at the start of the school. That is the ultimate goal for both Southside and uh, Davis Creek Elementary. So once again, I want to thank uh, the Board of Education for their contribution towards our playground. Uh, with the money that you were all allocated to us, we were able to get something that we really wanted, which was a basketball court, a half basketball court, which is the, the gray area here. So everything's within our fence line, and um, I'm very appreciative of Johnny Kane, who was the um, uh, contractor that we've been working with, and um, him being so patient with us making changes, saying, no, we don't like this. Can we do this? Can we change this out? And he was on top of every bit of it. So we're very appreciative of that. And once again, I just want to say thank you for your support. And um, I think we did a pretty neat job. So. <laughs> what, what, what feature are you most excited for uh, 
difference? Well, I think the, the poor in place, I mean, just because, you know, we do have uh, most of the wheelchair bound students at our school. And so it's something that will make it easy access for all students, even those students who are wheelchair bound. And plus, you know, once again, they, I'm not sure how much the community will be involved where we're located, but it will still be open for, um, for community members as well. So once again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. All right, thank you all. All right, so one to Milton Elementary. Um, uh, the, what you're seeing right there in this picture is is the furring strips for the uh, masonry siding that's gonna go on the side of the building. So that's just the prep work. And they've uh, also got the moisture barrier, which is a paint on moisture barrier. And that's why the building is not pink. It's just the moisture barrier for that. Um, and they continue to do the block at the second, on the second uh, floor. Plumbing and electrical still being ran on the first floor and uh, the rafters are, uh, are, they're starting to set the rafters and they should start putting the structural steel on top uh, very, very soon. But on the front where the, uh, some of the, the metal roof is gonna go, they have started putting the rafters ready for that area. Just a real quick question for you. I mean, Absolutely. I've heard some folks talk about the traffic study that's going on up there for the Milton Elementary. Um, can you kind of explain our participation in that as a school board and the school district Absolutely. So Kaova um, is Interstate Planning Committee uh, Commission, and they they really had um, you know we were collaborated with that, and they had asked if we would be able to contribute to a traffic study. And in that traffic study, uh, we were we able to contribute some funds to that, and that just allows them to look at the economics of the area, the Milton area, to look at uh, the the flood wall, different aspects of that when that's going to be complete. Um, and to be able to look at all those factors in there. And then we had a, a public forums actually held at Milton Middle School where everybody came in. And what they did is they put, you know, counters on the, on the ground to see the number of traffic and then the number of buses that we have, how many buses are likely to go out there and how many parents are likely to drive their, their uh, students out there. And they look at all those aspects and out uh, Newman's branch. And what they did is they came to that meeting at Milton Middle School to be able to present what they say as engineers, as traffic engineers, to look at that and say, this would be an appropriate option to do, to be able to minimize the traffic. They're looking at specific wait times for, uh, for stoplights and the possibility of widening a road and all these different things. So they are, they're putting out many, many different options. And that what they did is they wanted the, the community to be able to give feedback to some of those options. So they gave feedback to those uh, and they take that back and they give us a final report. And what that final report allows, uh, uh, allows the Department of Highways to do is really apply for federal grants in order to be able to um, address some of those concerns. You know, we, we've, got the school, we've got the school out there, but what this really allows, it gives the information that the Department of Highway needs in order to make an informed decision of what would be appropriate to be able to minimize the traffic uh, down the road and be able to look at all that. But they did ask our opinions on, on different things and we were able to attend that meeting just as anyone else. So it's really with the Department of Highways right now on how they proceed to move forward with that. It, and it gives them it gives them some leverage and a lot of the from my understanding a lot of the federal grants that they are able to apply for it is required that they do a traffic study before they be able to do that obviously they'd want to be able to look at that and determine that they make an appropriate adaptation to that road or an intersection to make it appropriate that's going to fit the needs of the community looking at all those aspects so it's really in the department of highways hands at this Any point idea when that we actually uh, just got a finalized report oh, a couple days ago. Yep. And then we, we've also been community, and, and you know, the city of Milton's involved with this as well as the Department of Highways. They're all receiving those reports. And again, it doesn't mean that anything's gonna happen right now. It just says, here are their recommendations from, a, from the standpoint of, an engine, of a traffic engineer to determine what would be appropriate. And there's several different options in there and what would be, meet the needs of the community in the school. Okay. Thank you. No problem.
Any other additional questions? On to the Woody Williams Center for Advanced Learning and Careers. Uh, the main uh, sanitation line is being installed uh, that I brought to you a couple, a few weeks ago. Electricians are running conduit. Water um, suppression has been installed. Exterior footing and rebar is being placed, and steel reinforcement beams are being welded in place. And that's actually the picture that you're uh, that you're seeing there as well. So on to construction change orders. There are none at this time or this week. We do have two minor personnel changes. I always seem to give you the wrong page number. So let's hope that I, I give that. If you look under, uh, the first one is gonna be professional, and that is going to be uh, page 11. So page 11, under professional, employment, coaching, professional personnel. We did have a small error there. You see Kaylin Bird, Huntington East, uh, middle football assistant coach. There is a strike through on football and it will be girls track assistant coach. It's at the bottom of the page. Yes, at the very bottom of the page. So again, strike through football and then add girls track assistant coach. Okay, if you go down to or go look on page 14, at the very top of page 14, and I know it looks a little different. I've taken screenshots a few days ago before it was printed out, but you're going to see under uh, CK24036, Bobby J. Cooper, that is, we're going to remove that item. That is a strike through on that entire item for Cologne Elementary Cook three full-time. That is a strike through on that. So please remove that. Okay. So one of the last thing is policy updates. And uh, again, it's just uh, a second reading on substitute areas of critical need and shortages and a third uh, reading and approval on uh, termination of administrative and other position contracts. And what that is, is uh, we are required to do the laterality policy. And this is third and final reading for that. Any questions? somewhere across the school district at different points in time. Um, but last week we celebrated uh, with our girls softball and our boys baseball from Campbell Midland High School, their new turf. This uh, completed our turfing projects at both Huntington High School uh, softball and baseball fields, as well as Campbell Midland High School softball and baseball fields. Um, it was you know, wonderful to be there along with the student athletes and the sponsors that also helped contribute along with our school system and making sure that these projects came to fruition. So I want to congratulate these students and uh, uh, their teams and their families on being able to have um, you know, fields both at Huntington High and Cabo Midland now that will serve um, you know, these students for the next 15 years um, and having a playable surface, even if it's a little bit rain and rainy and soggy out, they're going to be able to continue to carry on with their practices and their games. Uh, last Thursday was 314, which represents uh, Pi Day across the country. And, uh, here in Cabell County, it was no different. Um, we had Pi Day activities both at our some of our elementary schools and uh, across all of our middle schools. Um, that is yours truly, uh, with a with a, a very good aim um, <laughs> from uh, a, a young lady by the name Johnson uh, from Milton, and uh, they Milton was uh, I, uh, every year I afford or I make the offer to a school um, that has the highest syllabus completion for Mathia, um, the ability to pie the superintendent. And so uh, this year there was a, a big line of people that were ready to do that, and I was happy to partake. Um, however, there was one special request, and that is that through the many years of being pied, um, I have learned that um, the real pie has some side effects that will linger with you throughout the day. And if anybody's been pied before, they know that the whipped cream turns to a fermented milk smell uh, when it really gets up into the nostrils. And so this year they use shaving cream and it went much, much better. Uh, so uh, they, 
they were able to do that. And I think Kurt, Kurt Mann, uh, he was able to participate as well. Um, and so he, uh, oh, and Ms. Hornbuckle Myers. Actually, I, so today I had our Superintendent Advisory Council meeting um, at West Edge Factory, and one of the young ladies I was sitting and having lunch with um, was a student at Clayton Middle School, and she said, well, I got to participate in Pi Day, and I got to throw a pie at somebody. I got to throw a pie at Ms. Uh, Ms. Horn Ms. Hornbuckle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, actually, she's, I think she called her Auntie Sharon. But, um, but uh, so anyway, she was really excited about that. She said that I think the first time she missed, that you stood there like a trooper and really let her lay one on her. Yeah, so, <laughs> so uh, it's, it, Pi Day is always a fun activity across our county. Uh, last Thursday, we also celebrated our uh, third night on 5th. Um, as you're aware, we conduct four of those throughout the school year. Um, and so this night on 5th event is you know really meant to showcase the artistic talents of our students across the county um, and so we were able to celebrate the work of students from Huntington High School, Huntington East Middle School, Southside Elementary, Central City Elementary and Spring Hill Elementary um, and again this is an evening where um, the students are able to come here to the district office and we showcase their artwork uh, throughout the hallways of our, our central office um, and in, in addition to these students being able to come and showcase their work not only with their families um, we also provide that uh, art show sort of feeling. Um, so we have music provided by um, the Huntington High Orchestra as well as Huntington Middle School Orchestra under the direction of Vera Miller and Hunter Blankenship. And they were excellent. They were really, really spectacular. Um, and I often tell families that when we think about a well-rounded education, um, it's just simply not possible if it doesn't include opportunities in the arts. Um, and that's something I'm very proud of that we're able to continue to offer here in Cabell County. Um, you know, being able to make sure that we have a focus on the arts and the, um, the, the, the aspirations of our young artists to be able to continue to, to um, you know, really try to grow, grow them in, in their artistic talents. But the arts are not just about painting and um, uh, photography and music, it's also the culinary arts. And so Huntington High School Pro Start, um, under the direction of Amy Lynch, was able to have her students in, uh, here, and they were provided hors d'oeuvres uh, for our families. And of course, it's always a big hit, so they have punch and uh, hors d'oeuvres that are made by the, the students. My favorite for the, for, the, for the evening, though, was they did charcuterie cups. Um, so cheese and ham and um, olives and those types of things. And so again, it really provided a a refined evening for all of our students and our families and it's always just it's one of our favorite events um, we also want to congratulate Barbersville Middle School Pirates 4-H Club's beverages for bravery celebration um, they finished their annual beverages for bravery collection of items for various veteran facilities in the area um, so over the past three years they've helped collect over 35,000 items um, to be able to provide to veterans to help them relax um, you know, during their time with snacks and, and meals. And so I wanna really just extend a huge congratulations and thank you to um, our Barbersville Model School uh, Pirates 4-H Clubs. Of course, Mr. Miller, I, I saw you were there, yeah. you know, you were able to be there to celebrate with the students. Um, it really takes, you know, um, a special vision to be able to continue to do those things. And so we wanna thank our Barbersville Middle School 4-H kids as well as our 4-H sponsor at Barbersville Middle School. Yeah, I just wanna say Dr. Sack, I mean, you say all that. For this, uh, for this board meeting's excess levy facts, I wanted to be able to spotlight. Last, last uh, board meeting, we spotlighted school safety, um, how the excess levy provide, uh, if approved by the voters in May, we'll be able to provide uh, dedicated funding for our school resource officers, our school security guards at our high schools, um, as well as a lot of the other safety mechanisms that are in our schools, like uh, fire alarms, security alarms, those types of things. But this week, I wanted to be able to spotlight um, what the excess levy provides for our employees' salaries. So in the excess levy, in the excess levy um, it has been for many, many years, uh, many, many cycles of excess levy, has been salary supplements that fund 
our personnel salaries in Cabell County to ensure that they are the most competitive um, that we can possibly make them um, when thinking about neighboring counties or even neighboring states. So uh, in order to recruit and retain the best, we need to make sure that we're helping compensate in the best way possible. So um, the state aid provides um, a minimum salary benefit for all 200 days that are within the school aid formula. We know that in order to be able to meet the needs of all of our students, we, it's, it's nearly impossible to be able to offer everything that our communities and our schools need um, based upon that minimum funding formula. So we do employ people that are beyond the, um, the minimum allocation of staff. Um, in addition, um, there is a minimum salary for all of those, those staff members. So we supplement through the excess levy for our professional staff members. So that's teachers, counselors, nurses, social workers, principals, assistant principals. Um, their supplement is equal to uh, somewhere between $5,029 to $6,229 based upon their position and the number of days that they're employed. Um, in addition, and of course also their degree level. Um, similarly for our service personnel, the excess levy provides supplemental funding of $3,349 to $3,857 to supplement the service personnel salaries above the state minimum as well. So this is very, very important when it comes to, again, recruiting staff to our school district to work here um, and to create a career in Cabell County, but also to retain them. Um, and so this is something, again, that is very, very important. In addition, our salary supplements in the excess levy fund staff, uh, staff opportunities like co-curricular supplements. Um, this could be, for example, you know, we have many people, many, many individuals out there that go and have extra duty assignments like um, uh, FFA, uh, Skills USA type of type activities, um, uh, maybe it's speech and debate, whatever that may be. Those extracurricular assignments that are get paid are, are provided by the excess levy. Um, our academic program sponsors, like I just mentioned, career and technical education supplements. So one of the things that, that we do very uniquely here is, is that because the workforce out there, um, in the workforce, you can make more money being a welder than being a teacher or being an HVAC technician than being a teacher of HVAC. We offer uh, a supplement to those teachers that, again, attracts them to go into the teaching field um, to, to, again, to train those future industry leaders. And so that supplement is also covered through the excess levy. Our supplements for our special education teachers, the National Board Certification Supplements for, the, you know, we recognize all of our National Board folks. There's a county match, uh, is it $3,500, Drew? That is covered through the excess levy. And then, of course, the Personal Leave Incentive Program that allows staff to earn annual bonuses for attendance. Uh, that's if they miss five days or less. That also is covered under the excess levy, which uh, provides up to $1,150 for staff if they miss five days or less of, um, uh, of attendance. Um, the other portion of the excess levy, when we think about employee benefits and salaries, that I that I know is is very important to point out, and this was something that was done many years ago that um, our personnel associations really advocated for, was in lieu of a pay raise many years ago, was to Im increase the benefits that our, our uh, employees get through their um, dental insurance, vision insurance, and long-term disability. So currently, uh, through the excess levy, we're, we're paying about $1,776,000 for those extra employee benefits. And again, that's what this excess levy would provide. Um, uh, as I mentioned before at the onset, you know, the state aid provides a, a certain number of positions based upon your enrollment. And so uh, the excess levy pays for all of those positions above the state aid. So as of October 20, 2023, this included about 77 professional uh, position salaries that are funded solely through the excess levy and 98 service position salaries that are solely through the excess levy. Um, in addition, any employee that has over 200 days of employment, we do not get state aid for. So anybody that has like a 201 to a 220, 235, 240, or a 261 contract is also funded through the excess levy as well. Um, the last thing that I wanted to point out is that through, again, uh, employee salaries and benefits, our substitute costs, in whether it be our service personnel or our teachers, is also covered under the excess levy. Um, and the reason that that's important is, again, state aid only allows for a certain, they, they, they have a minimum uh, substitute salary that school districts have to pay, 
we pay more than that. Why is that important? Because not only is it best to better to recruit and retain the best employees that are full-time or part-time, it's also important to be able to recruit the best substitutes. We want substitute teachers or substitute service personnel to work for us and take our jobs rather than, let's say, go into Wayne County or Putnam County. So again, having a competitive substitute pay rate is also equally important. And that's where um, this past year, um, uh, about, well, it was about $1.4 million was spent on substitute salaries from our excess levy funds. So again, I want to re-emphasize that this is just one portion of the excess levy. The excess levy funds many different things. We talked about school safety last board meeting. This board meeting, excess levy as it relates to employee salaries and benefits. But as you'll see, there are many other things like CTE and workforce development, our athletic programs, our summer programs, which we're going to learn a little bit more about at the next board meeting. I'm mean, sorry, the next board workshop um, over a summer program that we have scheduled for this summer, maintenance and equipment, our instructional support through our, all of our academic programs. It's also musical instrument replacement and, and fixing, um, as well as our school libraries, uh, cyber safety and security, uh, device security, our playgrounds and outdoor learning, uh, outdoor learning, sort of like what Mr. Uh, Boggs mentioned here just a little bit ago. And then, of course, there is funding um, for a significant amount of funding for the Cabell County Public Library and the Greater Huntington Park and Recreation District. So we are publishing this so that um, there's a QR code that if you want to learn more about the individual items that the excess levy provides, it's on our website. Um, so you can go see additional excess levy facts. The, the final thing that I want, I'm sorry, the second final thing that I wanted to be able to talk about is this past Saturday, we had um, the Cabell County Education Foundation, which is a, um, a nonprofit uh, that works to fund classroom mini grants um, across our county, but as well as, well as our school service and, and teacher of the year programs, um, collaborated with the Junior League of Huntington for the ninth annual Hard Hats and Heroes event um, at Marshall Health Network. And it was a wonderful event. I know that Mr. Polly and Mr. Um, um, Miller were able to attend, and uh, Mr. Mr. Miller was able to walk around with his grandson and actually help out pass out refreshments for some of the vendors. And Josh Polly was there the entire time uh, <laughs> and worked relentlessly. So I want to thank you two for coming and helping with this event. I also want to thank Jason Moses with Moses Auto Mall of Huntington, who was one of the major sponsors for the event, but he also um, paid for all second graders at Village of Barbersville to be able to attend the event. Um, so he was over, he actually went over to Village of Barbersville earlier last week and handed out those tickets. And so I want to thank Moses Auto Mall for being able to sponsor those tickets for our kiddos. And then finally, some upcoming district events. Um, we have obviously the month of March is not only Music in Our Schools Month, but also Women's History Month, Social Work, uh, Social Work Month, and Mental Awareness Month. Um, Today, I also had my Student Advisory Council meeting, and I'll be providing you an update in the board update on Friday on that. It was a wonderful event where our students were over at West Edge Factory. Um, had a really unique experience there. Um, Thursday, uh, we will be announcing our Math and Achieve Middle School uh, winners and classes of winners there. That'll be on Thursday. Also on Thursday, we have our Village of Barbersville concert in their cafeteria at 1.30. We're going to be having spring break all next week, so we hope that our families and our, our staff that are off that week, not all of us are off, but uh, many of us, many of the teachers and service personnel do have that week off. We want to hope, wish them a, a relaxing, restful week um, as, they, as they move into the holiday weekend. Um, April is also Purple Up, Up Month um, in, across our school district. Purple Up, Up Month celebrates um, and recognizes the importance of our military families in our schools. Um, and, and as you may not be aware, but Cabell County Schools is a designated um, Purple Star School District, which means that we make an extra effort to provide resources and uh, support for our military families. Uh, we're actually, that was a four-year designation, so we're looking at uh, renewing that uh, through the state of West Virginia. Um, but again, we want to be able to celebrate the, the hard work of our military families and servicing, serving our country and doing all we can to be able to support their efforts with their children. April 1st is an OSE day. Um, students will return after spring break on April 2nd. And also on April 3rd is the Novel Knockout Awards, um, which is a, a, unique, a, a unique activity at the Transportation Complex uh, at 
uh, one from one to one thirty, and so uh, more information will be sent out to you all on that. If that might be something you might want to attend, board members, that uh, I apologize for the lengthiness of it, but it is a very busy time, um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions? So if I could just add some context. So our sure. policy our policy has 30 minutes. So if you want to extend it, we just need to have a motion to extend it. Um, if, you, if, you keep it if you keep it at 30 minutes, it'd be about a minute and 30 seconds per presenter. Um, if you go to the, the, the normal three minutes that we usually provide, um, it'd be right about an hour. Uh, Ms. Molly, I don't mind it. Some people may speak three minutes and some people may not. So, right. Three. Right. so um, just according to policy, we just need a motion to extend extend our delegations beyond 30 minutes to provide three minutes per speaker. Uh, I'll make a motion that we extend our delegation to be heard uh, time to three minutes per speaker. All right. Thank you. Mr. Pauley makes the motion to extend the time. Second from Mr. Miller. Any discussion? Favor signify by saying aye. Quick little notice here: um, the board, pro, pro, uh, excuse me, the board provides a period for public participation at every meeting of the board, and publishes rules to govern such participation in board meetings. Comments by members of the public at special meetings shall be limited to agenda items only. Public comment is not an open forum to attack individual school system employees or board members. Each speaker will be allowed three minutes to address the board. This is a business meeting of the school board. We appreciate the public's input and will listen attentively, consider each comment, but will not respond, debate, or answer questions during comments on agenda items or during the public comments section. When you are called to come forward, please state your name, address, and group affiliation if and when appropriate for the record. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Um, as, I, as I look at the list, um, of course, I'll, I'll list them by order of the uh, of how they signed up. But I do see that we have a significant number of, it looks like Huntington High School students that are here to speak, so I want to thank them for coming. But I would also ask that Mrs. Scarberry, who is in the back, and Mr. Cunningham, I see that your principal is here. Um, after all of the Huntington High School delegation speaks, I want to invite them to meet with both Mrs. Scarberry and Mr. Cunningham to be able to address any concerns that you are going to be bringing to the board this evening because again the board is not in a position normally to, to, to say anything I'm not saying you can't I'm just saying that um, normally they don't they don't respond and Mrs. Scarberry and Mr. Cunningham can uh, sit down and address those with you maybe even in the lecture room um, after it's over if you all would like to stay and um, have maybe some answers or to make sure that uh, your concerns are uh, addressed so with that being said, I'd like to start with Hillary Gibson, Huntington High School. Hello, um, my name is Hillary Gibson. My address is 208 2nd Street West, South Point, Ohio, 45680. And um, I am a school counselor at Huntington High School. Um, I've had the distinct honor to work with Um, for the last five years at Huntington High School. 
Um, I could spend a lot of time, um, much more than three minutes, speaking about her character um, and all of the hours after school um, that she's put into her students and her program. Um, but I plan to use my time to present the evidence that lies in front of us at Huntington High School. Our master schedule at Huntington High School is student driven, um, meaning what the students desire to take, we try to provide. Their requests equal our demand if we are permitted. During the 22-23 school year and Mrs. Lewis's first year as a business educator on the Hill, um, she had 99 students enrolled in her business courses. This school year, she currently has 147 students in her business courses. Again, as we are student driven for our master schedule, 262 students have requested to take her business courses for the 24-25 school year. The reason all of this is pertinent information is because Mrs. Alicia Lewis is the reason for all of this. She is the reason our business course requests have almost tripled. She is the reason our FBLA members have quadrupled. She is the reason these students desire to take business courses and pursue this field in the future. Shortly after finding out that Mrs. Lewis would potentially lose her job, students came to the counseling office to alter their course requests. If you move forward with the decision to riff Mrs. Lewis's job, 262 students in business courses will not happen. They will drop their courses because this amazing educator has created this program, which will lessen the number of CTE completers at Huntington High School, which will decrease the amount of money the county receives for CTE programs. Please do what is best for our students, Cabell County, and the beautiful place we call The Hill. Reinstate Alicia Lewis as the business educator at Huntington High School. Thank you. Thank you. Jenna Lindsay. Jenna Lindsay. Hello, my name is Jenna Lindsay and I attend Huntington High School as a sophomore. I take all honors in AP and I'm a straight A student and I'm incredibly involved within my school. Um, however, getting involved with the business program at, at Huntington High School was truly one of the best things I've ever done. And I say this not only for the knowledge and opportunities that I've gained, but also for the incredible woman that I've met, Miss Lewis. And just kind of to um, expand on what Miss Gibson was saying, um, I became aware that there is a possibility that Miss Lewis will not be a part of the business program next year. And I can speak for hundreds of students that we are heartbroken. And I've been so honored to witness Miss Lewis exceed the expectations of her position and uh, as well as be a part of the change that she's made for the program as a whole. Um, on top of teaching all of her classes, which as Ms. Gibson was saying are very full, uh, she manages three businesses within the school, the snack shop, the merchandise. Uh, we just additionally opened the Buddy Brew, which helps uh, you know special need kids also get the business concepts as well. Um, she guides each student through each step to provide real insight on how businesses are ran. Um, she has also welcomed, welcomed a new chapter to our school known as FBLA that I could not be happier to be a part of or um, happier to be a council member of. Um, she pushes all of her students to excel and when FBLA competed at nationals, or sorry, excuse me, states this year, 24 out of 26 students qualified for nationals in Florida. And that is significant that is six times the amount of last year, and that should really, that should show something. Um, all of this could not have been possible without Miss Lewis, and I genuinely could not see anyone else doing her job better. She goes above and beyond for all of her students and is truly loved by everyone. And us as a community have gathered together, and we've gained over 1,000 signatures and petition for Miss Lewis. And I'm sure whoever is being considered over Miss Lewis is great, but there I can guarantee you they will not make anywhere near as great of an impact that Miss Lewis has made for me, all of our students, and just everyone as a whole at Huntington High School. Thank you. Thank you. 
Sierra King. My name is Sierra King. I live at 1735 Crestmont Drive. I'm an 11th grader at Huntington High in Miss Lewis's classes and her FBLA program. Um, I've seen Miss Lewis time and time again be there for her students, so this is a chance for us to try and give back to her. She's one of those teachers who you should be lucky to have. Um, again, she's fought for her students over and over again, and I've noticed that firsthand. Um, whether it's personal or education-based, she's going to be there for you no matter what. Um, I've seen her try and give her students better opportunities. And after, again, we had 24 of our students place for nationals, she pulled each of us aside, hugged us, and told her, told all of us how proud of us she was. Um, and when she found out that a lot of her students didn't know how to write business emails, she took time out of her lesson plans to teach that to us. And I just, I honor that because she really wants to higher the expectations for teachers and I just I think that's absolutely amazing. Owen James? Did I get your last name right? Okay, thank you. Good evening. My name is Owen James. I live at 2653 Collis Avenue. I'm a senior at Huntington High School, and I'm also the treasurer of the uh, FBLA program. In my years of education, Ms. Lewis is one of the most universally liked and respected teachers I've ever had the pleasure of having. In just two years as business teacher at Huntington High, our FBLA, FBLA program has skyrocketed. We had multiple first place winners at states who were also the first competition winners in school history. Like Jenna said, out of the 26 students that competed at states, 24 qualified for nationals in Orlando this summer. Some students even qualified in multiple events. We have Ms. Lewis's guidance, support, and motivation to thank for our success. With Ms. Lewis's removal from the position, Huntington High will lose not only a beacon of academic excellence, but also, more importantly, a kind-hearted, beautiful soul that wants nothing less than the best for her kids. It is a great injustice to such a person that embodies everything a teacher should be could be stripped of her job with little warning. That's all I have. Thank you for your time. Gabrielle Watts. Sorry. Gabriel, I'm sorry. I apologize. <clears throat> My name is Gabriel Watts. Today I stand before you just not as an individual, but as a representative of a member of FBLA that has not been profoundly touched by the dedication and passion of a remarkable educator. We are here to discuss not just the job, but the future of the business students at Huntington High. The teacher in the question has not only been a guide and a mentor, but also a beacon of inspiration to the students. I'm, just, I'm a junior this year, but the last five years I've been in and out of juvenile facilities. Finally, this year I found my place at Huntington High. This place is in Miss Lewis's class. She has gone in the call of duty to ensure that each child receives the attention and support they need to thrive. Thanks for her support and the support of others. I am the state champion of cybersecurity. We're not just talking about teachers' subjects. We're talking about teaching life lessons that the students will carry on after the long life and leaving the classroom. It's essential to recognize the impact that teachers has, the development of our youth, the role of teachers extends for far beyond the confines of the classroom, the shape, minds, hearts, and our future leaders of invaders and citizens to remove such a teacher from our position to deny the quality of education they deserve. We must consider the long-term implications of our decisions and the messages we send by not standing by a teacher who has constantly demonstrated excellence and committed. It is not just that about the one person, the livelihood of upholding the values of education community and supports what we all cherish. So I urge to re you to reconsider the life of countless success and positivity feedback from these students and parents alike. Let us work together to find a solution that keeps us an invadable teacher among us for the betterment of our business educational systems and the future of the students that take step in business classes they may teach in the future. Thank you. Caitlin Reed.
my name is Caitlin Reed and I live at 330 West Lomas Avenue, Huntington, West Virginia. I am a senior at Huntington High School and I have been blessed to take Ms. Lewis's class for two years. Dear Cabell County Board of Education, as you know, I'm here on behalf of Elise Lewis. Ms. Lewis is the best teacher and mentor I've ever had. I was in the Business Academy before Ms. Lewis came along and I can tell you how much she shaped the Business Academy to where it is today. Before Ms. Lewis, there was no school store, there was no snack shop, there was no designs, no merchandise, no buddy boo, no nothing. Give me one second. The last two years I've gotten to spend as a business student underneath Ms. Lewis has been the best years of my high school career. I've grown not only as a student, but also as a businesswoman. Ms. Lewis has believed in me every step of the way, encouraging to make my achievements known and to never stop achieving my goals. Before Ms. Lewis, there was no FBLA, and in my opinion, every student should get the chance to be a part of it. And with Ms. Lewis as a teacher, I know that can happen. Most importantly, I just want to say thank, I just want to thank Ms. Lewis for being the best teacher and mentor I've ever had in my life. The days I was fighting illnesses or battling my heart problems, she was right there for me. She has led me in the right directions for the last two years. As me and Courtney sat with her sharing all of our ideas and life details, she listened and gave us the best life advice I've ever received. For the State Leadership Conference, she listened to our ideas for our project and supported us in every way and never failed to tell us how proud she was of us. As me and Courtney walked across the stage at Camp Dawson to achieve our first place award for visual design, she was the loudest and proudest in the audience. As me and Courtney walked in to the bathroom afterwards, we saw her in the hall and she gave us the biggest hug with tears in her eyes, repeating how proud she was of us and how proud she is of all we've accomplished. I can honestly say I am who I am today because of her guidance. She's been more than a teacher to me. She's become family, and without her as a business teacher, I don't know what will come of the Huntington High School Business Academy. Courtney Hairston. Good evening, everyone. My name is Courtney Hairston, and I'm a senior in I'm a senior at Huntington High in Ms. Lewis's business class and also part of FBLA. As many of you know, we are all here for Ms. Lewis. Some of her know her as Ms. Lewis and some know her as Mama Lewis. Ms. Lewis is one of the best teachers that I've had and one of the best people that I know. She has a very kind heart and loving soul and wants the best for every kid in the school, no matter if they're in her class or not. Without her, we wouldn't have the school store, the snack shop, the coffee shop where the kids can learn what it's like to have a job. She lets the ones in her class make any of the merchandise that we sell. We started a group called FBLA. At first, none of us knew what it was until she gave us a very well understanding of what it is and let us go to the competitions. Whenever we went to LSC, she was the loudest teacher and person to cheer on her students. She also told everyone how proud of them she was, even to the ones that didn't place. Mama Lewis has helped a lot of kids get through things and helped them with the outs with outside school things. She does so much for our business program and for the school, and we would love to see her to continue to, continue to do so. Jay Turner. My name is Jada Turner, and I go to Huntington High School. Uh, my address is 1415 Harvey Road, Huntington, West Virginia. Um, I would like to start this off by saying I love Ms. Lewis, and I don't know what I would have done without her. It's hard to find teachers who really care about students, but she is one of those teachers. For example, <laughs> last year I unexpectedly had a baby, and I took three months off school. When I came back to school, Ms. Lewis was only the only teacher who helped me and made sure I got back on track to pass my classes. She really cares about her students. This is my last year of high school, and I would love to leave knowing that my little sister would have a teacher who cares about her and would help her succeed. Sam Lefevre. Sam Lefevre. Oh, okay. Um, Amanda Jackson. Um, I'm sorry, Amara. I know that. Yeah. I, I saw the R. It looked like an N. I apologize. Okay. Um, my name's Amara Jackson. My address is 1844 Enzo Boulevard. I'm a senior at Huntington High, and I'm vice president of FBLA. I want to start off by saying Miss Lewis has grown our business class in FBLA, FBLA chapter in amazing ways 
but that's not what I want to speak on today. Don't get me wrong, these are amazing accomplishments and should be celebrated and honored, but her character is more important. The other day, I was talking to my friends about who our top favorite teachers that we have had over the years were. The ones who have had Miss Lewis in class listed her. All of us now being seniors, it is special to be on this list because we have had many teachers over the years. Going to Huntington High, I feel it is sometimes hard to see students really connect with teachers on a deeper, deeper level than just being student and teacher. Miss Lewis is one teacher who is amazing at this. A lot of people know her, her as Miss Lewis, but I've always called her Mama Lewis because that's what she is, a motherly figure. She's one of the kindest people I know, but won't hesitate to keep you on track. I know if I ever needed anything, I could go to her. She would give me the shirt off of her back if I needed it. It's hard to find teachers who truly care about their students and who want to teach. Sometimes you sit in class and you can tell your teacher doesn't want to be there just as bad as you don't. Sitting in Miss Lewis's class, I have not once felt this way. You might wonder why I care because I will be, I will be leaving next year. I care because not only is losing Miss Lewis detrimental to her, but is detrimental to all of Huntington High. Losing her will be doing every student to come through with this service. Thank you. Duran Jackson. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Amar's dad, Councilman Duran Jackson. Uh, me and Amar speak about this uh, business class all the time is how uh, I got introduced to the uh, future business leaders of America. They're right, that's what they keep referencing, FBLA. I'm the type to want to ask, um, what that means. I, I've been trying to wonder on how you determine a good teacher. And listening to these young people today first give me faith in our, in our future, but definitely is a gauge to just listening to them to let you know that Miss Lewis has to be a great teacher. Just listening to the way they talk about her. And, and then my daughter said there is no way possible, and, and I don't know what's going on as far as if she's being replaced, if the position is being just uh, done away, what's going on. But she told me, she said, there is no way that they can replace her. Said, said, there, there's no way that they can get anybody to be better than her, just period, maybe close, but not as good as her. So I, I personally, I don't know what we really even discussing here. Uh, it seems like when, when I, so, so when she asked me to come and speak, I started doing some research. West Virginia, not Cabell County, is ranked 47th in the education system, 47th out of 50. 30% of our teachers get burnout and quit the job within five years, and we feel like we're in a position to fire one or do away with what's known as a great teacher, not, not somebody that y'all might have interviewed that, that still have to prove themselves. We know that she's a great teacher. You don't get rid of LeBron James or Caitlin Clark. You keep your best. You keep your best players in the game. It's, it's business. You keep your best employees in a business. You don't get rid of them. Uh, to, to offer a higher quality of education, you have to have high quality educators. That's just that's just how it is. And I'm not in the, the education system, but to hear the way they talking, to talk to my daughter on a daily basis since this came to be, how it's affecting her, making her sad, and then just where we're at in the county, also in Huntington with our school system, it just, I, 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 don't, I don't get it. I, I just, I don't get it. I know, I, I don't know if it's y'all's decision or y'all's fault, but I just, I, w I hope we will reconsider and keep one of our superstars. It's obvious that this lady is. Thank you. Peyton Perkins. Sorry. My name is Peyton Perkins and I'm a sophomore at Huntington High School. My address is 6 Redmond Lane. This is my first year in the business program. Public speaking is not something I'm overly comfortable with. However, a teacher who has changed my life has changed my high school life so greatly that here I am speaking on her behalf in front of everybody. This teacher has changed the way I go about my lookout on my day. She is the reason I look forward to classes throughout my day. Miss Lewis has worked so hard for the business career path, so hard in fact that she is the single reason I am in the program at all. I mean, without her, I would not have been able to have had the opportunities I have been given. I am not sure what other teachers and classes have to deal with the problem of having too many kids request their class. 
but Miss Lewis does and she makes the best out of it. When I told her I wouldn't be able to take her class next year, much like many others, she was willing to take time out of her day to add another period to the end of the day and make an eighth mod or an eighth period at the end of the day to where a class would be available to those students who didn't have time in their schedule, much like myself. So she fought this for me and the others. Without her, I would not have had the chance to make it as far as I am. And for example, I would not have had the chance to make it to NLC, the National Leadership Conference for FBLA. FBLA, the group she brought to, to a school that I originally went without. This year, we've gotten 24 out of 26 of our students to nationals. This is a record for our school, and Miss Lewis is to thank for this. Thanks to her, I'm going to nationals as a first place winner in marketing. Thank you. Rhonda Wood. Hello, my name is Rhonda Wood. My address is 149 Winchester Drive, Culloden, West Virginia. I am the science teacher at Crossroads Academy. I am here today because my entire school got transfer letters, which if I was a betting woman, I would bet precipitated the issue with Mrs. Lewis because our business teacher now needs a job and that's how that works. So let's kill two birds with one stone and let's stop this proposal to eliminate our school as a in-person thing. So, I believe that what we do at Crossroads Academy is unrecognized, unappreciated, and not acknowledged. With the help of my students, with the help of our students, we put together a little, it was supposed to be a brochure, but the measurements kind of got off a little bit, but a little informational brochure. So I'm gonna quickly go through some of these things for you. I want you to know that we do individual face-to-face -face academic help. Students receive real-time academic assistance from all staff, including the service personnel. We provide focused attention on the student's specific academic need. We monitor, monitor our students all day. We supervise and monitor them. Students are continuously monitored and supervised by staff throughout the entire day in all settings, including classrooms, the hall, bathroom breaks, before school, after school, and during mealtimes. I've included a student testimony we hear multiple times a year. I couldn't have graduated. I couldn't have made it as far if it wasn't for the staff at Crossroads. We have the options pathway, the GED credit recovery, and yes, the second portion of that is business. And our business teacher received a transfer letter, so he will be bumping the lowest seniority person. At-risk students are evaluated and provided focused academic skill improvement to obtain their GED and receive a diploma. We provide on-site meals and take-home food. Our students get a nutritious meal, both breakfast and lunch, and we provide food bags from outreach community, not from Cabell Schools, but from our outreach, our students take home food bags on the weekends so that we can combat food insecurity. Our students are the most at risk. We provide basic necessities such as clothes and hygiene items for our students. We have a pantry with clothes and we have a closet full of hygiene items and we pass them out and students um, access that almost daily. We provide hands-on, collaborative, interactive academic lessons, face-to-face. -face. Students receive curriculum aligned with state standards and county adopted resources and highly, with highly qualified professionals with a combined over 100 years of, of combined service and a classroom experience. A hundred, a hundred of those. We provide on-site and immediate technology troubleshooting. If a student has a problem with their device, we do it immediately. Can I keep talking for like 30 seconds? Was that the timer? Okay, so. Did you make it? Yeah, I'm, can I'm just gonna do 30 seconds, my little closing thing. Our focus okay. is at Crossroads is truly okay. centered <laughs> around behavioral health. We believe we must Maslow before we bloom. We accomplish this through our unique opportunity to form deeper bonds and understandings of our students. SACS's proposal eliminates nearly all critical supports that we at Crossroads provide to our most vulnerable student populations. Studies show the most vulnerable students suffer the most with virtual remote education. This board in SACS has already expressed in-person learning is far superior to virtual. 
we implore you to not approve Saxe's proposal to restructure Crossroads to be a virtual program at any capacity. Thank you. Bonnie Hughes. Hi, my name is Bonnie Hughes. Um, my address is 201 Seneca Road, Huntington, West Virginia. I attend Huntington High School as a sophomore, and I had the pleasure of being in um, the business class this year and last year. Um, when I first got here, we didn't have like much business programs. We didn't have the snack shop, the school store, all of that. And then once Miss Lewis came here, we um, she started all of that, and um, it has grown to where it is today, which we have, like they mentioned previously, too many people are signing up for her classes, so we can't have all of those, and she always tries to make sure that we can be in her classes. She has added extra classes for me last year because I didn't have um, the time on my schedule to do that. And um, for FBLA, which is Future Business Leaders of America, she did bring that to our school. Um, we did not have that before last year. We had 12 people, and this year it has um, quadrupled, and now we have over 40 people, 26 of which went to um, the NLC, which is the states for FBLA, and 24 of them placed at nationals, um, including myself with Peyton Perkins on first place in marketing, and Ms. Lewis has not only helped the business program, but she has been a role model in my life. She is hands down my favorite teacher at this school. I don't know like what I would do without Ms. Lewis, seriously, because she is just, she always works her hardest for everyone and all of her students. And she always inspires me to do the best that I can do. And she always has confidence in every single one of her students. Um, even when we don't have confidence in ourselves, she makes sure that we know that we can achieve the rules that we have. Thank you. Ella Lewis. Hello. Um, my name is Ella Lewis. My address is 160 South Edgemont Road, Huntington, West Virginia, 25701. I'm a senior at Huntington High, and I'm the daughter of Alicia Lewis, better known as Miss Lewis or even Mama Lewis. I'm here to speak on behalf of her RIF that she is receiving in her position as the business teacher at Huntington High School. My mom started working at Huntington High in the attendance office in 2012. Two years later, she moved to the main office and she remained there until two years ago when she decided to pursue teaching. Of course, I am biased. I respect my mom more than anyone in this room. I have grown up in Huntington High for the past 13 years of my life. I've seen cycles of fantastic teachers come and go and even recruit me into being there into their own classes. In the most selfish way possible, I have never seen a program grow and make a complete turnaround in the time span that my mom has turned around the business program at Huntington High. Her first year teaching, she started FBLA back up, which hadn't been in our school for almost 20 years. We had about 10 total members, four of which qualified for National Leadership Conference last year. Just a year later, this year, we have a total of 40 active members and out of 26 who competed at the state competition, like you have heard, 24 of them have qualified for nationals and we are now raising the money for all of us to compete. Some of those students also qualified in multiple events. She has brought this program up from nothing and has multiplied our numbers in just a year. Just imagine how these numbers could continue to grow. She is not only my mother, but she has given maternal, su maternal support to more students than I can count. I can truly think of more students that call her Mama Lewis than they do Mrs. Lewis because she strives to create bonds with each of her students and provide them more support than just in the classroom. She spends her free time coming up with new ideas for her class and improving what is already there. Within the past year, she has introduced the Hilltop Shop, Snack Shop, and the newest edition, Buddy Brew. She has sacrificed her time and space for her students to thrive and try new things, which have been a huge success. When she gets home from school, she is on her computer until she goes to sleep. She works day in and day out, and her, her efforts are always obvious. I truly don't know how anyone else could carry the weight of the business program and all that comes with it like my mom does. My mom is my best friend, and I respect her more than anyone who walks this planet. She has instilled me with more morals and values than, that have carried me to where I am today. 
I'm an official adult in three days. And all I can keep thinking about is how grateful I am to have a mom like my own, who has instilled all of these outstanding qualities that make me want to strive to be just like her every single day. I know because of the woman that she is that I will make it out fine in this world. She's the woman who gets stuff done and gets it done right. She's my biggest inspiration, and I truly don't know anyone who is more fit for this position than her. And yes, like I will state again, I am incredibly biased. With all this being said, I hope you can see the love, compassion, diligence, dedication, and importance that my mom brings to Huntington High and her position. She gives students a sense of belonging. She takes pride in her job and the success of her students. But most importantly, she loves what she does. She loves her coworkers. She loves the challenge. She loves teaching. She loves learning. She loves each and every one of her students, and she loves being Miss Lewis. I thank all of you board members for giving me the chance to come up here and speak on behalf of my mom. I hope you take all that I have said into consideration before making your decision. Thank you. Monty Fowler. Good evening, board. Switching gears a little bit. My name is Monty Fowler. I live at 625 South Terrace in Huntington. And before I read what I need to read, I just want to tell you, Mr. Rockin, and you, Ms. Uh, Sharon Hornbuckle Myers, it's not directed at you, too. You've been very helpful. I appreciate it. I look forward to continuing to work with you. Since it appears the editorial page of the Herald Dispatch has been co-opted by the Board of Education and they won't run my letters to the editor regarding things that go on here anymore. I'm going to have to read it to you so you know how I feel. County School Board has a problem with transparency. The West Virginia Freedom of Information Act is a wonderfully robust law that allows the average citizen to inquire of and keep a check on what their elected and appointed officials are doing with their tax money except for one thing. It's depressingly easy for agencies and public officials to either ignore FOIA requests outright or hide behind one of the few allowed exemptions. The only recourse then is for a citizen to sue the district in district court to try and get that information that should be freely be theirs in the first place. Such is the case with the Cabell County Board of Education. They don't like being asked specific questions about their actions, employment numbers, salaries, or dealings with the Cabell County Libraries or Greater Huntington Parks and Recreation District. For months, the majority of my FOIA requests have been either ignored or met with, we don't have to answer that because that would require us to compile a report, which is contrary to the FOIA requirement the school board specifically cite which exemption they are using for each and everything they are telling me they don't have to do. Cabell County School Superintendent Ryan Sachs talks a good game about wanting to be transparent with the public, so why are he and his board being so intransigent with these requests? That was my letter to the editor the, the uh, newspaper refused to run. Thank you. Brianna Akers. Brianna Akers. Recently, my son was expelled until January of next school year. Therefore, he would be a Crossroads student until then. But recently, I learned that Cross the Roads might be closed down and turned into a virtual school. When hearing that, I could tell you I felt a multitude of emotions, but the strongest one right at that moment was worry. I was worried about my son first and foremost. In the past, he has not responded well to virtual learning. I would typically only be worried that he would struggle and that his grades would drop, but I'm also worried because in the fall, my son will be a senior. And I am so, so worried that his senior year is going to get messed up or delayed in some way due to virtual learning because he does not do well with it. My son, as well as other kids, would not be sitting at home unsupervised because let's face it, adults in the household, they have to work nowadays. You can't sit at home and make sure your child is doing their schoolwork. My son needs to be in a classroom setting. He needs a qualified teacher to be there with him, to help him. He needs the support that he receives through his IEP in person. I fear that this is harder to do with virtual learning. 
On top of being worried about my own child, I'm worried about all these other children that do not respond well to virtual learning. It is very important that these children receive the education that they deserve, not what someone just wants to give to them. It is it could be very detrimental, not only to some of these students, but their families. Think about how when a child is struggling, how that can affect the family. The wonderful staff at Crossroads takes a lot of worry off of my mind because I know that they are providing what is needed. And I would like to mention that Mrs. Wood didn't get to um, one of the important parts about the relationships that are formed at Crossroads. They have immediate help immediate support when they need it. If they're getting upset or they have a problem they need to work through, they will sit down and work with them. They have spoken with me before and just make sure that I'm on the same page with them, knowing what's going on with my child at school. And these things are so important and you're not gonna get that looking at a computer screen. You're just not. It is very important for my son and many other students to be able to be in a classroom and receive all of the services that they provide. And I would really like for you to take that into consideration before you change it to virtual. Thank you. Gavin Akers. My name is Gavin Akers. I'm a student at Crossroads, and I just wanted to come here today and explain how I feel about the idea of shutting us down. It is more negative than positive, I think, to start things off. I feel like a crossroads, I look at it differently than what you all would, clearly, because I feel like it's more of like a little family. Everybody knows everybody, you know, real close with the teachers, everything like that. And I just feel like shutting us down and putting us into virtual learning would just be negative. Uh, where was I? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm not going to talk about it. Thank you. Take your time. All right. I'm going to just start over. My name is Gavin Akers, I'm a student at Crossroads, and I just wanted to come here today and explain why I think the idea of the shutting us down is more negative than positive. To start things off, I would like to feel I would like to feel like the way I work at Crossroads, uh, any other student or teacher that works at Crossroads, looks at it completely differently than what you, anybody else would. You might think that these are just a bunch of troubled kids that aren't going to amount to much in life, but then it's, it's much less more than what you all think. It's more like a little family. Anyone can, anyone can tell you it's been there or currently going, such as I. And the kids over there know everybody and teachers are able to do more there for me personally than any other school has because it's more one-on-one. -on -one. It's a smaller setting and they can sit down, talk to you better than what any other school can, I feel like. Uh, but the idea of virtual, I mean, have you all actually sat down and thought about the way that some kids, you know, they struggle at home and, you know, they rely on school as like places to eat or a safe place or like just a getaway setting. Plus, I don't think it's a good idea to have a bunch of kids that already don't really care or mind to get in trouble or anything like that, to leave them at home for most of the day unsupervised and having to do virtual learning, because let's be honest, that is not a punishment, and the expulsion is supposed to be a punishment. Plus, really think about virtual, think about how COVID went, failed miserably. Thank you. Madam President, um, that concludes the individuals that have registered to speak. However, we have gotten a request from one additional speaker um, to possibly come up, and it's Ms. Lewis. Sir, okay. Okay. Board members. Alicia right. Lewis. Yeah, Ms. Lewis. Thank you. And I'm, 
I'm sorry to <clears throat> excuse me. I'm sorry to ask to request to speak late. I was not going to speak. Um, however, after all of my students have shown up in support of me, I feel it is the right thing for me to do to address you all. Um, I want. I'm sorry. I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Alicia Lewis. 160 South Edgemont Road, Huntington, West Virginia, 25701. Um, it may come as a surprise to some of you that last year was my first year teaching, but I also had decided by the end of the year that I didn't want to teach again. And it's going to surprise some of my students to hear that as well. I was a first year teacher. I had been a secretary at Huntington High for 11 years prior to that. I've always loved the students at Huntington High. But teaching is a different animal. <laughs> and those of you that have been in a classroom know that the first year is extremely difficult. I had a hard time feeling like I was making a difference. I had a hard time understanding, you know, what where my place was with these kids. I also lost my father halfway through the year, which threw another wrench in the plans. That was extremely difficult for me. So with all of that, I was ready to turn and <clears throat> go back to what I was comfortable with, to, to a secretary job. And I can't tell you how extremely grateful I am at this point that that was not what God's plan was for me. I am privileged to work with these students. This is where I am meant to be. This is <clears throat> what I am meant to be doing. Um, as Ms. Gibson stated earlier, uh, we started with 99 students enrolled in business. This year that's gone up to, I think, 100 and, I don't know, close to 130 or 140. Next year we had 262 students request business. For two years, our administration has requested a second teacher. And for two years, we have been um, turned down. And I understand that is because of our completer numbers, because we are a CTE program. And we absolutely want as many completers as possible. Um, <clears throat> however, from a business mind point, if you have a demand, you should provide the supply for that demand. So I'm asking you that you also think about possibly adding even an additional business teacher, even for half time, so that these students can get these opportunities. Our completer numbers last year, I'm sorry, can I go for like just a second more? Yes, okay. Our completer numbers last year were eight. This year I think we're up to 10. However, I'm at, I'm, I would really like to have a four year cycle so that I can prove to you that we are going to produce completers in the business program. I'm looking to at least double that number for next year and maybe more than that. If I can get to them, I will. So I thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. I understand this is normal protocol, rifts and transfers. I do understand that I've been in the system for a long time. However, I do feel differently about this because these are my babies and I want to stay and I want to provide them with as much as I can do to get them prepared for their future. So thank you. That concludes delegations. spoke, but I'm proud of our students. Anytime that you take a personal interest in participating in these types of meetings, these public meetings, I uh, greatly appreciate it. Um, you did a phenomenal job. Excuse me, I'm speaking this way. No, no, I'm speaking this way. You did a phenomenal job. The presentation, the articulation was incredible. Um, so continue to not always turn out to be the way we 
looking or may, you know, what are decisions may happen to you. But I want to commend you for taking the time to come out and to participate in these meetings. Uh, just an incredible job. So I know, you know we have a lot of decisions to make. It's going to be part of that for tonight. But I think the students, again, the Gulf Street Plan is fantastic too, particularly the students. me that. I am glad you have found your calling. You should be, and I know you are, really, really proud of these kids. Thank you, President Small. Anyone else? Mrs. Smalley, if, if you would permit me, I, I would like to, I also want to echo uh, Mrs. Bond and Mr. Miller's comments. I, I, I am also uh, very appreciative of our students who uh, this is a tough thing to do is to come before a board um, stand up here at a microphone and speak um, <clears throat> and the passion that you have for Miss Lewis is uh, definitely felt I, I have you know had several conversations with Miss Lewis obviously both in her role as a, a, a secretary at the, at the front office but also in her time as, as an educator and um, for me to sit here and talk about how I feel about her would probably it, it's, it's wouldn't do it justice um, and so I, I will tell you though that um, the impact that she has made on her students is very apparent from the ways in which her students came up and articulated but also the professionalism that they showed this evening and I am very very appreciative of that um, you know one of the one of the, the greatest frustrations that I have as a school leader is their um, when it comes to personnel decisions that we have to make as a school system, that the law does not put students first. And it's very unfortunate that Code 18A hamstrings school districts to not always do what is best for our students. Um, and I, I um, am very, it is very frustrating because when we look at having to make um, position restructures or eliminations um, we don't look we're, we can't look at the people we look at the positions and then there's a process that, that occurs based upon what 18a designates um, and that law does not allow us to consider um, these teachers that go above and beyond in building programs that are so robust um, I say that because that is a frustration that we all share um, but I also want to say that, that while there is a process that, that we have to follow, and I, at some point I do hope that the law changes to where um, that, that those considerations can be made. Um, uh, I'm an optimist in this, in this scenario. Um, the process you know, will, will go as it, as it is designated through um, 18A. But I, I do, I am very optimistic that on the outset of this, that um, as someone had mentioned earlier, um, a solution for the issue. I, I do foresee a solution to the concerns that were brought forward today. Um, obviously those, there, there's several things that have to fall into place, but I do remain optimistic. Um, but we do have to let the process fall, follow through. And I think that you know our students uh, being here today and advocating um, on behalf of their teacher, but the program is so so important and I think it's also a, it's a it's a great activity for them to see as to some of the things that um, the school district is um, limited by um, and how important it is that we continue to advocate with our state leaders to change the things that we see uh, hold back a school system from being able to put kids first all the time And I also want to offer, um, again, we have Mrs. Scarberry and we have Mr. Cunningham. Um, if our students um, and anybody that came this evening would like to have some additional
context or conversations, um, I would suggest that uh, we have, and you can do it at any, any point, but we have a lecture room that it would probably be the most conducive area. Feel free to stay, so we'll just make ourselves available when the, when the time is right. But if they want to, if they want to, you're more than welcome to, to um, follow Mrs. Scarberry and, and talk with her as well. It is okay, or they can stay. It, I, just whatever they want to do. Yeah, I just want to okay. make sure. But there will be someone to be able to talk with you. All right, board members, let's move on to the consent agenda. Are there any items for discussion? Anything you'd like to pull? Any questions? Just for official clarification or for the record, Sam. Yes, sir. Start, I'm assuming we're talking about again the, uh, the the section four, uh, in particular one of them in particular we're talking about the Apple hard uh, Apple hardware and services. Uh, my understanding on that is that again this this is a four year type of a, of a contractor uh, contractor services we're getting here at no interest. Yeah, it's it's so, basically a zero percent right. lease. So it's a it's a lease to purchase. So at the end of four years, we own the devices outright. Right. But it's a it's basically a zero percent interest rate over the four year period. And it is providing or replacing pretty much every piece of equipment that we're that we're now providing for students and also for the staff. Is that correct? Pretty much. I'm going to ask Jason to yeah. clarify that for us. The Apple purchase, if, if approved, will replace every device for our K eight through actually pre K through eight students. All of our staff members, MacBooks and iPads, and ninth grade MacBooks. We're going to put the MacBooks in a cycle now that we bring in new Macs every ninth grade uh, enrollment. Okay. And it also, it also includes service contract, right? The, 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 the service contract, service uh, what is it? If something breaks. For the iPads, Apple, yes. Apple will actually take care of it. Correct, for the iPads. Okay. Does it include professional development? There is no APS services on this. Okay. That's, no, that's separate. Correct. Okay. Nothing is changing on that. Nothing is changing on that Correct. as well. Just our ninth, tenth, and eleventh graders this year will retain their MacBooks right. as they go forward. With that ninth grade class, but the ninth right. graders will get a new one when they and they come in. Yeah. If they choose to purchase it in four years, they can purchase it in four years. Excellent. I'm I'm glad you asked that because I think we answered that question incorrectly. It's new devices for pre K through nine. Nine. Right. Yeah. Oh, did he? Oh, sorry. Yeah, he, I may have skimmed like that, that one. And then the tenth, eleventh, twelfth, they're still right. Well, we're still on that side. Still on that side. Correct. Right. And then, yeah, but it's one, one other question. Just that answer that one. So, okay. One other question, too, a uh, clarification or re clarification. Is, uh, when you're dealing with the, the playgrounds, there's been a lot of discussion out there that the board has never done this before. We've never had uh, uh, provided funding to our, our schools for playgrounds. And I haven't been on the board for the last year and a half. This is the first time I've seen it. So, again, I uh, heard the answer to the question. So, actually, can you explain that again? Because this is the first time. Yes, sir. That, no, that is absolutely correct. So, um, since since my time as superintendent, I, I would have a hard, I, I, I would not feel right to speak on behalf of right. the previous administration. Right. But I can say that during the during the time I've been superintendent, um, there's been significant efforts to be able to provide um, uh, at the district's full expense ADA equipment on on many of our playgrounds across the district. Um, so, uh, bringing up the equipment within those schools. Their playground equipment up to being ADA accessible, um, and then of course Highland Elementary, which to date, um, during in the current administration we have, um, is the only school that has actually been completed uh, for you know complete new construction. Um, Highland Elementary, we uh, partnered with Highland, and they had some funds that they put forward, but for the um, uh, the playground that they have over here off of Third Avenue, um, that was also a significant district contribution. I'd like to ask Drew though. Um, Drew, do you have to have the numbers as to what we invested in Highlands Playground, as well as to bring all of our ADA equipment uh, up to speed over the last seven years? 
Yes, sir. Um, so we actually talked about this in our February, I think it was the 26th board work session. Uh, so it was in your packet, uh, you know, from that meeting. But uh, at High Lawn, when the new High Lawn was constructed, the board uh, provided uh, some repairs and, and, and refurbishment of uh, an installation of playground equipment that that equated to one hundred fifty nine thousand six hundred fourteen dollars just under 160,000 <clears> and then there, there's also been playground upgrades um, at one two three five different playgrounds for ADA compliance also um, over the last several years in order to make sure they're fully compliant with ADA guidelines um, so you know there those those are the major expenditures that the board has had in recent history uh, in addition to what the board appropriated just a couple of board meetings ago and is considering tonight uh, for the purchase of, of two of this uh, yeah, for the schools. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? All right. I'm going to ask for a motion on the consent agenda. I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda with the uh, person. No, that's, that, that's coming up. Uh, approve the consent agenda. Paulie has made the motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Mr. Miller has second. <coughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Let's move on to financial. Mr. Brockton. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> uh, on the financial section of the agenda this evening, we've got our normal routine uh, monthly reports. We've got our treasurer's report. Uh, for the month of February. We've got the vouchers payable also on there for the month of February. Uh, we have a list of budget supplements and transfers uh, presented for approval. Uh, but also wanted to take the opportunity to give you a couple of updates um, uh, on, on some items that are hanging out there. Uh, one is you've heard me for the last several months uh, talk about our property tax collections for the year. And I'd mentioned that there was a fairly significant gap uh, with the tax check that we received last week, a lot of that gap has closed. We're still not quite there. We're still about 1% off, uh, but that gap has closed considerably. So that was, that was very positive news seeing that uh, last week when the checks came in. That 1% still puts us about $500,000 off projections. We're talking about the size of the amount of money that we get from property taxes. Um, even a small percentage, it, it's still a sizable amount of money, but um, it has, has closed considerably. We were two and a half percent off at one time. Now we're, we're down to about one percent off. So that's that's good news. Uh, the other uh, piece of information that I wanted to address the board about this evening, uh, and I was hoping to have the bound copies tonight. They have not been delivered to us. We're going to get those to you as soon as they're available. Uh, but our uh, financial statement audit concluded and, and the report was published over the weekend uh, so I'll be sharing that with you like so I'll get you bound copies as soon as as soon as they arrive um, but we're, we're very pleased to uh, let you know that, that uh, through the audit uh, there were no findings it was a clean report we're, we're very very um, very um, pleased to receive the the news from our auditor and um, you know, one thing to, to keep in mind, you know, we, we get audited every year. That's just normal procedure. Um, but you know, we've had, you know, because our, our contract with our prior auditor ended, and uh, every three years we're supposed to do a new bid, so there was actually a change in auditors because the bid was up. So if you go back the last 14 months, we've had two very re well-respected, highly reputable independent CPA firms audit our financials and they've both come to the same determination that there, there's no findings there's no no issues that they had discovered in the financial report so we're very very pleased to be able to announce that um, that not only did you know the most recent report was good but you know, like I said really we've had two CPA firms in the last year really look at them and come to the same conclusion so I, I think that was that's also very positive news I wanted to communicate to the board. Well done. Excellent. Drew, um, <clears throat> historically, though, you know, the state auditor has the audit reports 
but we also publish them on our website annually, correct? Yeah, I've, I've made that a habit since I've been here, so I, I don't have the audit reports from before you and I got here, <laughs> uh, but uh, the audit reports from uh, the FY18 audit, that would have been our, our first year together here. Uh, all the way back to today's, we posted uh, today's audit report, uh, or the audit report that we got this weekend, we posted it to our website today. So the last six years worth of audit reports, they're all available on our website on the finance page. Are there any years in the last six years we've had any findings? No, sir. Thank you. Excellent. That's excellent. So it's a, it, it, I'm, I'm proud of the work that you and your team do, um, as well as our executive directors, our entire leadership, um, because you know there's many nuances to the law of how to spend money appropriately, um, and Drew's leadership is just first class. Um, he continues to make sure that he's up to date on the policies and procedures, both from the state auditor's site, but the Western Department of Education. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I, I just want to reiterate that we have always tried to make sure that those reports are readily available for the community. They're posted on our website and they have been for the past six, seven years. So, um, so thank you, sir. Thank you for your leadership. It, it really is a team effort. I, I do want to say that. that while I would love to sit here and take credit, it really does take a lot of people all wanting to do the right thing, following procedures, spending money appropriately. It only takes one bad apple to ruin the audit report, unfortunately. But I think not only you know, does my department try to make sure that we're, we're following procedures, but it takes buy-in from all the other departments as well and, and strong leadership throughout the district and so uh, it, it, it as much like I said as much as I would love to sit here and, and, and bask in the glory it really takes many many people trying to come together and do the right thing to be able to do that and so I uh, just wanted to make sure that uh, you were aware of that and, and give you an update on that report now that it is available and like I said we'll, we will get you the uh, the full bound copy uh, within the next few days as soon as it's delivered. Mr. Rogan, there's a lot of fodder out there from, I think, people who are unhappy with some of the decisions that we've made um, about audits and about wanting more audits and about wanting forensic audit, audits and about wanting the uh, state auditor's office to come in and do an audit of us. Um, I would presume that if, for instance, the state auditor's office felt that necessary, we have no problem with that if that's something they even do um, because of the track record that we just spoke about with you know all these years of audits with no findings um, but I just I just think it needs to be said that you know boards of education are under a lot of scrutiny they're audited on a regular basis uh, federal funds are audited from the State Department annually annually um, and so you know <clears throat> there is nothing uh, in Calvin County Schools financials that we have to hide is that correct yeah, um, yeah let, me, let me take a minute to talk to that because there, there's several things but yes I, I don't fear audits um, you know I, it's something that I, I I think it's it's because this is government money this is the taxpayers money I mean, it is so I mean, we need to be good stewards of the funds, um, and it, it's something that if we are making a mistake, I mean that's, that's what an audit is for: is is to catch that and root that out. So I, uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I don't fear them. Um, you asked, you know, as far as the state auditor's office, uh, the state auditor actually has already, under existing code, they are the administrator of the audits that we receive. They, they are the chief auditor, chief auditing division of the state. Uh, the reason why we have used CPA firms, and, and you know, like I said, we did have a transition this, this past year between firms, uh, is because quite, quite candidly, the state auditor's office doesn't have enough staff to be able to do all the governments in West Virginia. They don't just do school boards. Uh, they do some school boards, they do county commissions, they do boards of health and, and uh, you know, 
water boards. And, I mean, you know, there's a lot of governments when you look at all of the different types of government entities in the state. There's literally hundreds. Um, if you just look at the town governments, how many? I mean, there's, there's hundreds of towns in West Virginia. There's county governments. Um, the, you know, there's, there's just, there's not enough auditors to go around for the state auditor's office to do it all. So they actually, we, we submit an application to them and they have the ability to say we, you know, the state wants to audit a county. They have that opportunity, uh, but because they don't have the staff, they, they effectively encourage uh, CPA firms. They have an approved CPA firm list uh, that are that meet certain criteria. Not every CPA in, in the state is on that list. They have to meet certain uh, qualifying criteria um, to be on the list to even con be considered to bid on on these governments to audit. And so, you know, whenever we had the uh, evaluation process, Mr. Miller was on there. We did receive multiple bids. Uh, I don't know if it was four or five at this point. It was several months ago, probably almost a year ago now. Uh, but we had, you know, quite a few bids that came in. But you know, I, I think there's roughly 20 uh, CPA firms that are even eligible. Um, you know, we uh, provided a, a, a bid packet to as many of them as, as you know, we thought uh, could do a, a, a great job for, for our county. And um, you know, the ones that did submit a bid, they were evaluated by a committee and, and then the board approved uh, the selection of the auditor. Um, but another, another point that you made, Mr. Pauley, is that you know, we, we get audited by a financial statement auditor once a year, but we do also get reviewed by the Department of Education uh, right now every year because of all the additional uh, stimulus funds. There's, a, there's monitoring cycles where we get reviewed on, periodically from the Department of Ed. Um, you know, th there's, there are already multiple agencies that do audit us on a continual basis. Um, and I you know, anticipate that will continue. I don't think that's going to go away. And, and that's why, you know, as, as I opened with my comments on the topic, I said I, I don't fear audits. Obviously, it's uh, you know it, it it's not fun when you go through it because there's a lot to it. It takes a lot of time. You you do dedicate a lot of time working with your auditor to provide the information and, and explain uh, you know exactly the way that the county works. Uh, but that's just that's just part of the process. That's part of working for the government. And you know ultimately we you know I understand you know that's what the auditor's there to do. They're there to make sure that we are are accounting for everything accurately and they are there to protect the taxpayer and so that's why you know like I said I don't fear them that's that's just it's an important part of, of ensuring accountability to the public do you have any other questions I, I just also I, I would be remiss if I didn't say you know we talked about the leadership and being able to work together as a team to make sure that we we are handling uh, taxpayer dollars in the right way. But I would be remiss if I didn't talk about um, our, our, sec our secretary staff because they're the ones who a lot of times are the ones that are, you know, getting the, getting the initial, let's say, requisitions or, or handling, you know, uh, the financial, financial things and then getting approval from, let's say, their, their department head or what have you. But a lot of times they're the screener that if something is going wrong, they're the ones that first stop it too. And so the training and the support that we provide them, but their um, their dedication and commitment to making sure that things are done appropriately too can't be understated. So I also wanted to give a special shout out to all of our, our uh, district secretaries, <coughs> school secretaries, and everything. So. Well, I have one other comment too. Is, is if you look at the vouchers, there's been discussion with the school board about uh, meeting their obligations two vouchers in here, um, you'll see one to the Greater Huntington Parks for $113,807, which is the one quarter of the quarter of the payment that was outlined in our access levy that we're currently under in accordance with the uh, Supreme Court ruling that we've got. You'll also see on page 10, there's a, another check for 
Including the changes, including yeah, the amendments that Mr. Mr. Boggs had referenced, I think it's fine. So, um, I tell you what. How about just to provide clarification? How about uh, uh, board members? I recommend approval of the personnel section with the amendments listed by Mr. Boggs regarding page eleven, P eight zero nine one, uh, to change uh, Kalen Bird from football to girls track assistant coach and on page uh, 14 CK uh, to, to remove CK 24036 in its entirety. All right. Heard the recommendation. Do we have a motion? So moved. Okay. Mr. Pauley makes the motion. Second. And this is Neely. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries.